You get me. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Larry L. Welcome back to another video on Lander's YouTube channel. We're gonna be mixing a beat from start to finish. I'm gonna show you a lot of cool tips on how to get a better mix on your beats. Let's hop right into it. So here's the beat I'm using. All of these sounds are in my collection. You can get that link down in the description below. Let's just check this beat out real quick. When I'm creating a beat, I'm doing a little bit of pre-mixing as I go. I'm not gonna undo everything that I did, but you can see in this channel rack right here that these levels have all been messed around with. I do this thing called gain staging at the beginning while I'm making these beats. When I drop that first melody in there, I kind of gauge it with the metronome. I'll show you what I mean. So I want my first melody that I drop in there to be a lot lower, drastically lower than the volume of that metronome. And you can see what I mean here. And you can even see it in the mixer if you want to check it out. The melody is this number two track, and you can see the metronome that's going to be pretty much clipping at zero. It's going to be the loudest thing in the mix, honestly. You can see that the melody has been gain staged over here. I turned it down to about half or less than half. You know, if you want to check that out, I, I think it's around 39% that I lowered it to before I even started doing anything, before I even sent it to the mixer. I didn't even touch this fader in the mixer either. It's pretty much zeroed out. So now let's hit play. And you can, you can hear that it's a lot lower than that metronome. So I use that as a gauge and then I base everything off of that melody. So then when I'm adding drums, I'm going based off of that. So that way you're not clipping and you're not destroying your signal and your mix before you even send anything to the mixer. So that's a good gauge for, you know, some gain staging. What I'm going to do is play these all these melodies together. This is how I usually start out my mixes. I'll play anything that's some sort of melody and I'll listen to them all together as one. I don't want to solo each instrument out. What I want to do is listen to them as a whole. All the melodies, I listen to them as a whole. Then I go and I listen to all the drums, and then I listen to everything together, and then I mix according to that. So let's listen to all the melodies that I have being played. All right, so now I want to create some space. I'm going to have to put an EQ on this main chord progression right here. And we're going to get rid of some of that low. So that way we're saving space for the kicks, the 808s. We're not going to need these frequencies on this chord progression. I'm going to do the same thing on this sound right here. I have a gross beat on, so after the gross beat, I'm going to throw an EQ. And basically do the same thing. I think I want to cut a lot of highs out of this one. Sounds too bright to me, and I don't want it to clash with that main chord progression. So we're going to EQ some of these lows and low mids out. And I'm going to go drastic on here and just kind of telephone effect it. So I, I go by visual as well as, you know, hearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at these peak frequency, uh, the pink, 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 pink frequency ranges. And you can see where it's nice and hot right in this mid range. And I like that. So maybe I want to give it a little bit of a boost here and cut these super high frequencies. I like this range right here on this main chord progression. So what I'm going to do is cut some of that out of this vocal effect thing that I have going on here. So we're gonna cut some of those so they don't clash. And maybe keep some of the higher frequencies between one and 2K. I'm gonna give it a boost. So we can see we don't have much going on in the one to 2K range. So that's where I kinda want this one to shine. Maybe we can give it a little bit of a boost too in volume using this little gauge right here. Sounds pretty good. Then we got this string. I'm gonna put an EQ on that as well. Look at all these 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 three EQs together. Again, we're gonna cut the lows. Cut some highs. And just trust your ear. Don't go fully off of a visual, just trust your ear, just listen. 
try to, if you can, try to look away from your computer screen so it doesn't get distracting. I'm going to go back to this main chord progression and give it a little bit of stereo separation right here with this knob. And on this vocal effect sound, I'm going to merge the stereo separation so that way it's more in the middle. And this main chord progression sounds a little bit wider in the mix. Let's do some leveling. And it sounds like that chord progression is a little bit too dynamic for me, so what I'm going to do is throw a compressor on there. We can use any compressor, they do pretty much the same thing, but I like to use the SSL compressor by Waves. We're going to keep it on a 4 ratio, turn this attack down, and let's see what that's doing with this release right here. Adjust the threshold. Kind of flatten out those peaks where it gets too loud sometimes. That sounds pretty good to me. There's some other things that are going to be sitting around those frequencies. And I have this percussion loop right here. So I'm going to introduce that now. What I'm going to do with is I'm going to throw an EQ on there. And I am going to really cut the highs and cut the lows. And I just want this like mid-range as like a texture type of vibe on it. I have these sends over here in the right column. I'm going to add some reverb. Just to fill up some space. Now next I have this vinyl noise sample that plays pretty much throughout the entire beat. So I'm going to introduce that now into the mixer. You can hear it's super loud, distracting. Mostly what I'm going to do here is just level it out until it sounds like it's at a good level. Some stereo separation. Sound a little bit wider. Let's add an EQ. I think I'm going to kill some of the really high, high frequencies. And if there's any lows that are sneaking through there, I'm going to get rid of those as well. Again, to just create space so that way nothing is going to sound muddy or it's going to sound clashing when we get to the kicks and 808s. Because we want, we want to save that space mainly for the 808s and kicks. We want those to be the only thing taking up that frequency range so that way you get a nice punchy and non-muddy mix. So it just sounds like it's kind of blended with those melodies. All right, now let's listen to the drums by themselves. So really all I did here is just leveled things out. Nothing special. You can see that there's nothing special on these tracks. There's really, there's really no effects on these tracks other than maybe a reverb. And I did some panning with these toms. All right, let's, I'll, I'll show you what I did with these toms right here to get a nice clean mix on them. So what I did was I created a bus. It's really simple to create a bus. All you got to do is go to another empty track, name it whatever you'd like, and then highlight the samples and uh, instruments that you want to have in that bus. Highlight them like this. Go over to that tom bus, right click on that arrow, and hit route to this track only. So now these toms are routed to that bus, and you can put any effects on that bus that you'd like. So you can see right here, I have this tom bus sent to this reverb, so I have a little bit of reverb on it. I put an EQ on it as well. I, again, cut the lows and gave it a little bit of boost on the high end. So now let's move over to the kick and 808. Right now, I don't have any side chaining on them, but let's throw a side chain from that kick to the bass. So I'm going to highlight the kick. We're going to right click over the 808 arrow and hit side chain to this track. Then on the 808 channel, we're going to add a fruity limiter. We're going to go to the compressor, side chain number one, adjust the threshold and the ratio, and then let's just play it and see what that looks like. That's too much. I'm just doing a slight side chain here. Nothing that's going to be noticeable to the ear, but just slightly, it's going to be ducking the beginning of the 808 out when that kick drum hits. That's all we're going to do here. Nothing drastic. Do a little bit of leveling if you need to. I want my 808 slightly under the kick drum. You can see that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to ensure that the kick and 808 are just heard straight up the middle. They don't have any stereo properties whatsoever. So on those channels, I'm going to merge the stereo separation so it's fully mono on both of those. Most samples come like that anyways. Most 808s and kicks come like that, but I just like to make sure just as a reassurance type of thing. And the 
snares, I have these two samples layered here, and then every other snare hit, I have this big kind of wood block knock sound that has a little bit of reverb on it. And again, the, the key to getting a really good mix, the number one thing that you want to worry about is getting good samples. These samples sounded good right out the gate to me when I picked them. Again, if you want to check all my samples out that I picked, they're in my collection. You can hit that link down in the description below. Um, my main point being is that sample selection is everything. A lot of sound designers put a ton of time into their sounds, into their sounds and their samples to get them to sound good right out the gate. Really, it's just a leveling thing and a taste thing. All right, now let's listen to everything all together and see if we need to do any adjustments as far as the melodies and the drums go. So I think this main chord progression needs to get leveled a little bit. Turn that down. This reverse crash is sticking out to me, so let's lower that a little bit. Sometimes I do this at the beginning, sometimes I do it towards the end. So right now I'm doing this kind of towards the end of my mix, but I want to create a melody bus and a drum bus where all the melodies sit into one channel and all of the drums sit into another channel. And I'm going to highlight these and I'm going to dock them to the left so I have quick access to them. And then these melodies, so I have, I think it's two, three, four, five, and I'll put the vinyl noise into that as well. So I'm going to highlight all those tracks, go over to the melody bus, right click that arrow, route to this track only. So now you have complete control over all the melodies at once. If you need to turn any, any melodies down, you could do that with that one fader. Um, if you need to do it individually, you can still go into those individual tracks and do that as well. Uh, same thing with the drums. Let me route all the drums. So anything from here on, I'm going to route. I'm going to kind of categorize those, even the effects that I have, I'm going to do that as well. So I can uncheck those two toms because they're already being sent to that tom bus. So I'm going to unselect those two individual tom tracks and I'm going to keep the tom bus highlighted and any other effects. I'm going to kind of categorize those as drums. So we got all those tracks highlighted. We're going to go over to the drum bus, uh, right click and route to this track only. Keep in mind now. So here's a little uh, troubleshooting. If you do this after you created a sidechain for your 808 and kicks, you're going to have to go and relink those again. As you can see, they're not linked anymore. So all you got to do is just relink that sidechain. You may have to go to the fruity limiter and adjust that, put that back to the number one. That's all you have to do. The plugin's still there. All you have to make sure is that you go back and reroute that one more time. That's after you do this. If you do the drum bus after you already sidechained a bunch of stuff, Keep in mind that you're going to have to go back and reroute those channels. Um, if you want to save yourself time and not have to do that, create these drum buses and these melody buses at the beginning of your mix. You can even create a template. All right, so let's talk about the master. All I have on the master here, a soft clipper and a limiter. So all I do usually to get a quick just loudness on my beats before I do anything, before I send it out to anything, before I put it on any streaming platforms, what I do is I put the soft clipper and the limiter just to get it so it hits around zero, so it's nice and loud. So when somebody's listening to your beat, if they wanna buy a beat, if you're uploading it to any of the streaming sites, it sounds loud and it compares to the other songs and the other beats that are on those sites. So I just adjust the threshold here, I turn it down, and then I turn this post up. In the limiter, it's, it's bouncing around zero. We're doing some soft clipping so that way we don't lose any of the transients on the 808s and the kicks those loudest things that are in your mix, we don't lose the punch. As far as the limiter, I'm just using it as a ceiling so it doesn't go above zero. And I'm gonna make sure that it's not doing any hard clipping on the limiter. So you could do that by just opening these two plugins side by side and just giving it a listen and looking at the peaks. So you can see that the beat is nice and loud and I'm not adjusting any gain on the limiter. All I'm doing is using it as a ceiling and I'm using the post knob on the soft clipper to give it a little bit of boost so that way it clips it just a little bit on that fruity limiter. Yeah, so that's gonna do it for this one. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. I'll be answering your questions. And uh, again, thank you for joining me on Lander's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you get me.